Hey everybody, it's Phil Ralston from Sunday's 9.30 service. I'm at Osaka, kicking it off. Here we go, boom. It's gonna be a hot night. I hope you enjoy service with Pastor Dave and Pastor Diane. Thank you, Phil. Welcome to Worship at Christ the Servant from our living room to yours. We're so honored you have chosen to worship with us in this way today. So let's turn up the volume and let's get started. I will sing your praises. I will sing to you. I will sing forever. sing to you for all your steadfast love and faithfulness for all your tender mercies too for all your holy mighty deeds of love i will sing to you i will sing your praises i will sing to you I will sing forever, I will sing to you. You are the King of kings and Lord of lords, and you are worthy of all praise. You are the one who lives within my heart, I will sing to you. I will sing your praises, I will sing to you, I will sing forever, I will sing to you. You are the God who made the universe, you gave me life and helped me through. All of the trials that I face and so I will sing to you I will sing your praises I will sing to you I will sing forever I will sing to you I will sing to you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray together. Dear, Dear Father, Father, I ask you to give me strength to live this day as you would have me live it. Guide me in shining with the light of Jesus Christ in my words and actions. Fill me with your Spirit so that I may be for others an instrument of hope, peace, and love. Use me to bring joy to others, so that they may understand the life you desire for all your children. Amen. God hears your prayer and fills you with the power to live today, tomorrow, and every day, enjoying new and abundant life. Live in newness of life. Amen. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. pray eternal and all merciful God with all the angels and all the saints we laud your majesty and might by the resurrection of your son show yourself to us and inspire us to follow Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever amen we read from Acts chapter 9 Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, Suddenly, a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice, but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. He answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, 
and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days, he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues, saying, He is the Son of God. So this is quite a, a transformation we have in, through, this, through this story. Um, we heard about Saul a, a little bit already in the book of Acts where he was holding the cloaks for those who were putting Stephen, who was one of the earliest Christian, kind of a leader of, of uh, helping others. And because of his Christianity, he was being stoned to death. And Saul was present. He was, he was there. And then... I really, uh, sometimes we forget because we have all of the Romans and Galatians and if all of the writings of Paul, Saul becomes Paul, is so influential. But to be reminded that Paul initially is a really, really bad guy. If you, if you were putting this in perspective for the Christians, those early Christians, Paul was like a villain. You know, he really was someone who was out to get them. Well, the image of, of Saul is breathing threats and murder. Mm -hmm. That is how he is, he is introduced in this yes. section here. <laughs> He's breathing mm -hmm. threats and murder. So th this, is, this is the path he started on. This is his intention. Only um, Jesus kind of interrupts that. Jesus, it's interesting because we're in the season of Easter, and so we're still hearing of appearances of Jesus, particularly in the gospel readings. Of, and here, though, Jesus appears, but not in the visual way. It's, it's to, to hearing. So he hears the Lord. Well, there, okay, there's a visual element. There's light. There's an incredibly bright light. And that intensity makes him fall to the ground. And then, then he hears Jesus speaking to him. And that message is, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Now, Saul thought he was just going out to round up some renegade Christians. But the way Jesus speaks it is, Saul is actually persecuting the Lord. And then he instructs him. He says, oh, well, okay, he says, who are you? <laughs> who are you, Jesus? And it's like, oh, <laughs> I see. No, he didn't see. Because he also becomes blind, we're told. And I think um, there's kind of a physical element, but there's kind of a, kind of a symbolic element to well, that. Well, he has, he has been spiritually blind. Mm -hmm. And now he is physically blind mm -hmm. to put an emphasis mm -hmm. on that spiritual blindness. Right. And... It is, uh, both of them are going to be lifted at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, there, yeah, there's that, that overplay, interplay kind of thing going on. And so he, he, his um, companions take him into Damascus, and 
It says for three days. It kind of has a little echo of, uh, you know, three days Jesus is in the tomb, sort of a kind of echo of that. But then there's another part of this story that's also, I think, very important. Saul's not the only one who's having a rather, I would say, transformative experience because then the Lord Jesus speaks to Ananias, who is a Christian in Damascus. And Ananias has a job to do. Only like some of the prophets uh, in the Old Testament, when God would give them their calling, their job, uh, sometimes they kind of they kind of questioned it, right? They, they were not 100% well, sure. There, there's a difference here being played out between Saul, who mm -hmm. thought he was the religious expert doing the right thing by persecuting Christians, and Ananias, who's just simply a Christian in Damascus. Mm -hmm. We don't know anything about him prior mm -hmm. or after this. And their responses are so different. When Jesus calls to Saul, Saul says, who are you? <laughs> and when Jesus calls to Ananias, Ananias replies, here I am, Lord. Yeah. The one that has the relationship mm -hmm. with Jesus is mm -hmm. ready to serve mm -hmm. at, at a moment's notice, at the calling. Whereas Paul, Saul, was questioning everything, mm -hmm. even who are you, Lord? Mm -hmm. and, and with a little bit of qualm, because, of course, uh, the reputation of Saul did precede him. So, but absolutely willing to obey, Absol absolutely willing to take a risk and go do what he has been told to do. And because there is a special calling now that is being given to Saul, that he will be one who will go out to the Gentiles and share this message about, about Jesus. And that he is going to be one who will proclaim this, uh, even to the point though, that by proclaiming Jesus, he's gonna have challenges, he's gonna have difficulties in his life in the future. But right now, Ananias listens, he goes, he gets there and he comes to Saul who at this instant cannot see. So Saul has no inkling of at all, who's this person? <laughs> but he says, no, the Lord Jesus has sent me that you may regain your sight and receive the Holy Spirit. And as it says, at that very moment, it's like the scales come from his eyes. And again, it's that, that uh, spiritual, it's a physical restoration, but it's kind of that spiritual wholeness that is being given at, at the same time for, for Saul to now come to realize who Jesus truly is. And then, before you know it, he's preaching. Well, you know, it says that immediately his sight was restored mm -hmm. when, when Saul was obedient mm -hmm. and, and did as he was instructed. And then it says he got up and was baptized. Mm -hmm. Very simply, just as he was baptized. Mm -hmm. doesn't say who. Mm -hmm. You know, we have no details about that. And, and just to say something about baptism, because in some ways um, the church has developed a restrictive reputation mm -hmm. around baptism that the church puts so many conditions and requirements on baptism and you know we say well it's for a good thing we want to instruct people we want to mm -hmm. teach people what they're getting into and and you know to make sure that there's the proper commitment there and some churches require a certain age uh, of, of uh, accountability where the, a young person is old enough to make the choice for themselves. And none of this appears in the Bible here. It just says this man who is persecuting the church severely and physically was baptized. Mm -hmm. I, I can't tell you the number of times that we have baptized someone who says to us, I've been turned down by so many other churches mm -hmm. yeah. because they couldn't fulfill those requirements. Sometimes it was a time, uh, you had to spend a certain amount of time and, and attend a certain number of classes and, and you know jump through the hoops. But in scripture so often it is, and they were baptized. 
Happens right away. Just right away. Because it's not us so much mm -hmm. that are taking the action. Mm -hmm. It is God who is acting. So in this case, it doesn't say so-and-so baptized him. Mm. It just says Saul was baptized. Because now we're seeing a relationship Saul is developing now with the Lord. And that's where the emphasis is on. Mm -hmm. And so for us, we, we need to remind ourselves that our relationship is primarily with Jesus. We read Psalm 30. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord my God, I cried out to you, and you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing praise to the Lord, all you faithful. Give thanks in holy remembrance. God's wrath is short. God's favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping spends the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with my Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me, O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever. Sing praise to the Lord. It's a, it's a great psalm, and it's a reminder. Just We heard in the story from Acts about a really radical transformation uh, for Saul in his life. But then here we hear that you know, God has been in the business of transformation, transforming life uh, all along, over and over. Like, you've lifted me up and uh, put the enemies down. You've taken illness and transformed it to health, weeping and transformed it to joy darkness transformed it to light and especially in uh, context of Easter death and transformed it to life you know this is who God is and we should expect that trust that and then what's the response what is our response well it's Thanksgiving and praise that's that's how we re react to God's bringing of transformation. Well, there's the, uh, the image here of uh, restoring life. Mm -hmm. And uh, you brought me up, O oh Lord, from the dead. You restored my life. Um, and we're going to hear that in the weeks to come as we're going to be reading from the book of Revelation. Behold, I make all things new. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the story of, of Saul and receiving new life in Jesus. In Psalm 30, you restored my life. And uh, then in Revelation, and in the Gospel of John, we'll be reading of the continuation about resurrection to new life. So um, let's sing about new life. so much hurt wandering through this dry desert I've reached my limit can't take any more even the simple things seem like a chore load out here all alone my 
destination places unknown troubles come easily crowding around i'm feeling lost and want to be found and jesus says behold i make all things new these words are trustworthy true no matter your pain how deep your sorrows i am all your tomorrows i will always draw near i will wipe every tear these words are trustworthy true behold i make all things new When day after day it seems I might pray Can't make it through without this heartache In spite of these troubles do not delay Listen and pause and take time to pray And Jesus says, Behold I make all things new these words are trustworthy, true. No matter your pain, how deep your sorrows, I am all your tomorrows. I will always draw near. I will wipe every tear. These words are trustworthy true behold i make all things new behold i make all things new these words are trustworthy true no matter your pain how deep your sorrows i am your tomorrows I will always draw near I will wipe every tear these words are trustworthy true behold I make all things new We read from the book of Revelation, chapter 5. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice. Worthy is the Lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might for ever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. Well, this is a description of all of creation lifting a voice mm -hmm. and singing together. And also shouting out praise. And so I, I see this, this last line that we read. The four living creatures said, Amen. And that's why we start our worship the way we do. As we get to that part where we ask you, Amen? And the response is, Amen. Amen. 
I think this is also a reminder we're, we're going to be reading other portions of Revelation as we go through these certain weeks of uh, the season of Easter. And sometimes, it, you know, we have this impression of the book of Revelation that it's all intense, uh, kind of almost bizarre, hard to interpret, but there's many portions that are just like this that give us that picture of worship, worshiping God, singing, singing to God. And I, I found out, and I thought this was actually kind of interesting, that element of singing has transferred into our worship here on earth. And there are a great number of uh, hymns, even parts of the liturgy as well, that absolutely are based on passages from, from the book of Revelation. So even though there's a parts of it that are maybe more complex, a bit challenging, there's also quite a bit that has woven into our own way of worshiping God and praising God. And we just sang that just mm -hmm. before reading from Revelation. Behold, I make all things new. That does come from Revelation. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in another week we'll be reading that, that section. Yeah. But uh, I wanted to add it today because mm -hmm. of that theme of new life. And we'll be singing more songs that are I pulled directly from the book of Revelation in the weeks to come. gospel reading is from John chapter 21 and verse 12 through 19. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. This uh, little, little intro, I think a little context for this. So this, as it mentions, is the third time of uh, experiencing Jesus uh, in the resurrection, the resurrected Lord. This, we don't know quite how long after Easter day this was, but apparently uh, Simon Peter wants to go fishing. He says, hey, let's go fishing. And Thomas the twin and Nathaniel, James and John, sons of Zebedee and two others, uh, about seven apparently in total say, okay, all together with Peter. So they go to the Sea of Galilee and they're out there in their boat all night long fishing, which uh, without catching anything, which, which anyone who does do fishing can kind of relate to that. Sometimes you go fishing and you just don't catch well, you know, anything. Their, their, their lives had not been changed yet mm. and they're, they're exploring just going back to the way things mm -hmm. used How to be. How do we do this? Let's yeah. go back to what we used to do the old way. Mm -hmm. Let's just go fishing. Let's be fishermen mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. And th that's not to be. Their lives are 
changing. It's being changed. And so there's sort of like that failure to catch anything, which is different with than a little when, bit like being stuck. When we go out with a fishing rod, mm -hmm. that's different. They're going out with nets, mm -hmm. kind of doing, you know, doing it's commercial a, fishing. Yeah, teamwork. So mm -hmm. so to come up with absolutely nothing is that's unusual. Not good. That would yeah. be yeah, and. They'd been at it all night, and then um, Jesus shows up on the beach, calls out and says, hey, no fish? And they're like, no, nope, no. Nope. And then he tells them, well, put your net on the right side. So apparently they were over fishing on one side of the boat. He goes, put it over on the right side of the boat. And they, they do. And when they do, it says they can barely pull up. There's like so many fish. They can barely haul it into the boat. Then they get, uh, they finally get to shore, except on the way, Peter can't wait. He just can't wait to get to Jesus. So he even uh, jumps in the water early and uh, gets there faster, gets to the shore as fast as he can. And then they, uh, they have a little picnic, a little breakfast picnic on the beach. So it's a kind of nice, although I've never quite caught on to the idea of eating fish for breakfast myself, but that would have been very normal, very good, very enjoyable. And that's just at this time now. They're having breakfast when Jesus starts this special conversation. Remember, there were, there were six others, but here Jesus really focuses in on Peter. And he asks this uh, really important question, Peter, do you love me? Well, he does this three times, and there's a notion that, uh, as I think, we're aware how many times did Jesus, I mean, did Peter deny Jesus? When he was at the fire, when Jesus was on trial and was being beaten, and then Peter was challenged and said, oh, you're, you're one of those guys, you're the, one of those uh, disciples, right? And he, he denies that, right, three times. And uh, three times, in a sense, part of it is that uh, he gets to affirm, affirm his. But I think part of the denial, not only three times to affirm Jesus, but I think it's like three times to say, yes, I am a follower. That that's kind of really what Jesus is inviting Peter to affirm. Well, and this is the, the change of life moment. Mm -hmm. No, you're no longer fishing for fish in the, mm -hmm. in the sea as you have done all your life. Your life is changing mm -hmm. right now. Let's make sure this gets through. So three <laughs> times, it's feed my sheep. It's not go fishing, mm -mm. go fishing. Now his life is away a from- a, a real change of career. Away from the sea mm -hmm. and toward people. And that uh, it's an echo of uh, John chapter 10, which we will also be uh, reading portions of uh, soon in, in the coming weeks. But who is the shepherd? Is Jesus. And in a sense, it's like Jesus is calling Peter to take on this work. Peter, I want you to take up and continue the work that I have done and now you will bring that to others. And that, that word love, you know, in John's gospel, we, I think we can, can't quite hear that without uh, echoing or thinking back to, you know, the classic pivotally known verse from John's gospel that, uh, you know, the, God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life and that Jesus is inviting Peter, Peter, if you love me, keep giving me to the world. Because that's giving love. Let us pray. Rejoicing with all the witnesses of the resurrection, let us pray in confidence for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Open our eyes to see the presence of Christ in our midst. Open our hearts to receive forgiveness, grace, and hope. Open our mouths to proclaim, it is the Lord. Lord, we give you praise. For you always hear us. Break the bonds of oppression and the cycles of violence. 
Grant wisdom and humility to all in positions of authority, making them advocates for all who have no voice. Lord, we give you praise. For you always hear us. Bless all who cry to you. Shelter those who live in danger. Comfort the lonely. Heal the sick. Lord, we give you praise. For you always hear us. By your presence, strengthen this congregation to follow you. Help us to tend to those who are hungry and in need throughout our community and the world. Lord, we give you praise. For you always hear us. In resurrection hope, we commend to you all for whom we pray, trusting in the promise of new life through Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Amen. Amen. Lift our hearts in worship, praise ascending. To you all honor, glory never ending. Majesty surrounds you everlasting. Voices join together, start to sing. Praising you forever and forever. We're praising you forever and forever. ascending to you all honor glory never ending majesty surrounds you everlasting voices join together start to see praising you forever and forever we're praising you forever and forever ascending to you all honor glory never ending majesty surrounds you everlasting voices join together start See. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
join with us in speaking these words. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We pray together. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Stay in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And you'll see us here next week.